what's happening. How's everybody doing today? Good morning. When I say good morning, suddenly I think of, uh, I don't know where it's, where it's from. Good morning. Good morning. Is that like a commercial or a kid's show? Um, then I want to say, gray squirrel, gray squirrel, shake your bushy tail. I think I'm getting this stuff from my kids' kindergarten class when I used to go in and read books to them. That's probably what it is. So good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Hopefully everybody's fine. Talking about peace of mind today. Talking about life plans. Talking about making things happen. Talking about living life to the fullest. Um, I am sitting here with a, uh, hey, buddy, extremely cool cat. Go ahead, buddy. Take a leap. Whoa. Oh, he missed. See? Sometimes in life... (laughs) Sometimes in life, you're very capable of taking a leap of faith, and you do that, but your feet slide from underneath you, and you hit the edge of the bed, and uh, you got to realign yourself and and (laughs) try again. Go ahead, buddy. There you go. With a little words of encouragement, like, go ahead, buddy. He is finally up on a bed, and he's chilling. So uh, that was Kitty. Kitty uh, wanted something. He took a chance. Uh, His Footing wasn't very sure because he was standing on a pile of books that I have in front of me. He leaped, his traction got lost, and he smashed into the side of the bed. But guess what? With a word of encouragement from me, go ahead, buddy. He is now on the corner of the bed, resting and looking at me, and he's giving me the double eye blinks, which means Kitty loves me. Love you right back, my friend, my son, my buddy. Anyway, that's what's going on today. We're talking about peace of mind. We're talking about bringing our dreams and ideals into into fruition. We're talking about manifesting the things that we we might want. So with me, I'm sitting here thinking, as I do lately, a lot. Hold on one second. Uh, uh, Just about life, like I always do. I take account. It's called accountability. And as I sit here, and I've been for the past month and a half, been a little bit of a funk, uh, analyzing my life, analyzing where I am, where I've been, where I'm heading, um, and trying to make the right decisions along the way. I'm in the search for doctors, gastrointestinal, or whatever to call it, gastrointestinal guy uh, or woman, a new cardiologist, guy or girl, doesn't matter. Um, I hate doing that. And simultaneously, the doctor's appointments and such, you know, that you have to do to be responsible and to keep up on things. So I don't like being forced to think about the, the health thing. And then when you meet the new doctor, then you got to give them the old, uh, oh, this is the past. And I don't like talking about any of that crap. But we're going to forward through that because those are things that need to get done for your health. We're talking about everyday life and maybe goals that you wish to achieve. And how do you go about doing that? How do you set yourself up for success? I have a friend, Mark Marrow. Uh, you, you can uh, Google his name, M-A-R-C-M-E-R-O. Uh, you can also find him at Think pause.org that is think the word and then p-o-z dot org and mark is a motivational speaker mark is a former wwf wrestler very famous guy and he, he now spends his days and he has for the past many years visiting uh, grade schools and high schools and trying to inspire young minds uh, first of all to Uh, understand and accept who they are and love themselves for that and to inspire others not to be bullies, not to down each other, right? First of all, it's not a nice thing to do. Second of all, it's very unchristian-like. Third of all, we can keep going. You know, we don't get anywhere. We, We don't achieve anything positive in this world if we're downing each other all the time, temporarily maybe making yourself feel better, but it's hurtful. So this is what Mark does. And Mark had told me uh, one time about writing your dreams into fruition, making them happen and happen, manifest them. And how's he recommended his little post-it notes? Let's just say uh, I can go back to a story about another another guy I knew that, and it's not about name dropping, but why I'm saying this is these are people that inspired me to be where I am today. And you might say, well, where are you today? Well, I'm talking to you and I'm talking to folks all over the world, but I'm, you know, it's, oh, you could say, well, you're not making any money. Who cares? This is, that's not part of my dream. My, my dream is to sit here and hopefully become a a little light, uh, in your life, maybe to inspire you just a little bit to get moving. 
to do what it is that you love to do or want to do to do in your life here that you're given each and every day, or to take account for your life and to say, you know what? Hey, guess what? I think I'm, I'm where I should be. And man, am I appreciative of this, appreciative of this. Uh, and, and man, am I thankful that I didn't get half the things that I wished I had uh, got or always wanted. I'm loving what I got right now. I'm loving what I have. And so with that, um, those guys, both of those guys were a big inspiration to me. Uh, Dick Marcinko was the guy I'm talking about. You'll know him from the Rogue Warrior series of the books, founder of SEAL Team 6. Um, Tony, go home and write a book. Uh, how do you deny a guy like that when he's telling you to do something? That's your task. That's your mission. Get it done. And then when I get it done, send it to me. I want to read it. And then send it back. He sends it back to me. Okay. Edit this. Edit this. Send this to Simon and Schuster. Here's the number. Here's my people. People don't do that anymore for folks. Open those types of doors. And my manuscript landed on the desk of those folks up there in New York City. Guess what? A couple days before 9 11. And that was just something that wasn't happening, Tom. That's, you know, you could say, wow, bad luck. I can't believe that. Well, if I wanted to keep on going with it, I would have kept on going with it, but I didn't. But what did that help me do? It helped me stick my head out there a little bit, create again, write, and think, what do I really want? What do I really want to do in life? What do I want to be known for? What's my legacy? And legacy became a really big word for me. Legacy. What are you going to be known for, dude, when you're dead? Most people just die. And your family might think about you and, you, and your friends might think about you. But we, sometimes we fade away. And that scared the hell out of me, thinking of that. Not that I think that I'm, you know, worthy of being remembered. But I was taking accountability for my life and thinking, I'm here giving the gift of life each and every day. And here we go. We'll, we'll start posing questions. Why? The last episode I joked with, we had Shane uh, doing some research for us sitting on a computer. And I, I joked, Shane, what's the purpose of life? And, and his reply was to evolve to experience things and grow. And that is a big fear for me to not do that. There's another responsibility I think that we have as Christians, which is to serve God. And you can apply this to anyone. You don't have to be a Christian to get where I'm going to come from in this next sentence. Serving God is also done by serving others, right? By being Christian-like. But Christian life Christian-like can equate to being nice and kind to people. You don't have to be a Christian to do that. But isn't that not a nice thing to do, a good and worthy thing to do each and every day? Is that not what Mark goes out and does each and every day, visiting all these kids, these high schools across the country and across the world? And what a worthy and noble cause and what a legacy. So we look back at ourselves and uh, it's about that accountability that I think about and I think about life's purpose and I think about uh, also the soundtrack of our lives <laughs> and the music that I love and also the things that I have done and the music that I wrote and I think about my plans for the future. Okay, take your medicine, Anthony. Gotcha. Already did. Clear. What are your plans? What do you want to achieve in your life? What are your goals and aspirations? I can sit here for the rest of my life each and every day looking out of this seventh floor, seventh floor condo window watching the woods, and the little critters, the birds, all kinds of different birds, and up above hawks circling and turkey vultures to the right. And we'll get bald eagles come through every once in a while. And we'll get deer and raccoon and fox and a myriad of other wildlife creatures that I'll sit here and love. That they, to me, it's beautiful. And then yet, humanity is not far away. We encroached on their land here. And uh, I think about peace and harmony, man, getting along. How can we all get along together? How can we all live together? And then you think about, uh, this is how my mind works, by the way. Then I'll look at the news a little bit and think about what's happening in the world. And 
and how sad that is. And then I go right back to my legacy. Of what is my purpose? What am I doing here? Number one, first and foremost, to me, is serving God. And serving God would be serving people. And serving people would mean to me being kind and cool and empathetic towards each other and being that little bit of a light in the darkness. What, what, that, what does that mean? Maybe sitting here trying to let you know that in my own way, you're not alone in what you're going through in life. You're not alone being indecisive. You're not alone not really knowing how to achieve your goals or find your goals. And in that way, if I'm going through it, I'm going to share that on here. And hopefully that you get a little inspiration from this. And that's the purpose of this podcast. And then when I'm with Bink and Chico, Bob, we talk about other things. You know, we joke around, we laugh. What you're seeing there is three guys hanging out together, appreciating each other's company, and just laughing about life, laughing about the things that maybe some of us take way too seriously. And I think that laughter is one of the mo most important medicines in the world. I love to laugh. I've been a clown my entire life. People, I've gone to parties and they're like, hi, he's here. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> they, they laughed. They would hang out with me. They would listen to me. I'd always have this little crowd around me. What that really was, that they never realized, was my way of counteracting awkwardness and social phobias of being in the spotlight, being around people, not liking people, thinking, you know, I'm funny or laughing at me or laughing with me, but yet that was who I was, breaking that ice and joking with people. And that was always my thing, to develop a personality. And, and, and I'm, you know, hey, listen, in life, if we were all blind, it comes down to personality. If you, you've got the personality of a rock, you're kind of stuck. So you need to know how to communicate and, and, and work on your communication skills. And I've done that since a very young age. I'm honored that people will come up to me, whether it be family issues or whatever. I was known as the guy, like the guy. It goes to you, go talk to the guy over there. The guy who people would talk to with their problems. And I, I could easily listen and empathize and understand and think outside of the box and possibly help them. And man, to me, that I look back, what an honor to the people would think that of you to go and do that and feel good about that. doesn't mean I'm perfect at everything. I remember one time writing, actually, in my notes and, and saying it here on the show, you know, I don't have a college degree. You know, I'm, I'm not an expert in anything. And someone would have a doctorate said to me, my doctor, who listens to the show, by the way, you're awesome. Uh, what are you making excuses for about that? You're an expert in being Tony. You're an expert in being your own person. You've lived trials and tribulations through adversity, in adversity currently. You're an expert at you. So what you share, you don't need a piece of paper. You don't need a diploma. You're sharing your own personal experiences in the, in the hopes of helping others, right? That's what we're doing here. So with that, how do, you, how do you achieve your goals? What do you do? Mark would tell you to write your notes on a little stick at notes and put them all over the place. Write your dreams into fruition. And I'm sitting here, we talked about this before, and this is the beginning where Kitty did a crash and burn, leaping from the table here, the desk here, trying to get on the bed. He lost his footing on my notes. And that's ironic because I write my notes to gain my footing. These notes are probably 12 inches high and thick. That's how tall the pile is, and that's one pile. There's a pile in my closet. There's a pile in my drawer next to my bed. Same thickness. Probably 50, 60, 70 books of notes of me writing ideas and dreams and aspirations of what I want to do and where I've been and where I am. And I think the conclusion, if you read absolutely everything and made some kind of graph or pie chart or whatever that might be to analyze all those thoughts that I scribbled down on a piece of paper, it's going to come to the conclusion of, I am where I am, and I'm thankful for that, and I'm grateful for that. And the things in my life that have happened, have happened in my life, strange occurrences that put me right here, I couldn't have designed it any differently myself if I thought about it, if I had a master plan awkward, strange, weird things that have happened in my journey through life that directed me into this path that I, here I am, with who I am, with the people that I'm with. 
How'd that all happen? And then we can go into talk about theory, uh, theoretical probabilities. I opened this book today and uh, I have a whole thing written about theoretical probabilities. What's that all about? Let me see something here. And who would write about that, right? <laughs> Yours truly. Why? Because I was thinking about uh, how things happen. Is it uh, chance, circumstance, happenstance? And then I start investigating and researching theoretical probabilities. Calculating the probability of a single random event. And there's a formula for that. Probability equals event over the number of outcomes. And uh, probability is the likelihood that something will happen. So when you plug in that formula, uh, you can come up with some ideas, some numbers. And I have written here probability of a random phenomenon. Probabilities range from zero, no chance, to one. The event has to happen. Ever think about that stuff? <laughs> I think about it all the time because that segues for me into faith and into the concept of God, the concept of all knowing, omnipresent, omniscient, all knowing, all being, and how wild that is. And when you believe, then you sit there and you look back at your life like I do and take account of how everything worked out. Different chances and different, you can call them missed opportunities. I call them, that's happenstance. That's how it was supposed to be. Because I'm not going to look back at stuff and, and, and regret that. I made the decision of sound mind, mostly. And ended up here. Sitting uh, seven stories up in a condo overlooking a, a beautiful woods with animals. Sunshine on my face. Thinking about all the crazy things that I've done in my life, and here's where I am today. And you could say, well, where are you, dude? You're not making money from the show. You're correct on that. Where I am is where I am thankful to be. Somewhat stable with the health. We have a roof over our heads. I have food. We have uh, air conditioning and heat. We need it. I have clothing. Very little clothing, by the way. <laughs> I have two drawers, maybe a couple pair of jeans, maybe 20 T-shirts, about 10, 15 pair of socks, probably the same number of underwear. And then my closet, I have about uh, maybe five or six polo shirts, you know, with the collars, uh, one or two dress shirts. My suit is wrapped up in a ball in a plastic bag on the floor. A couple pair of dress shoes. That's because the suit don't fit any longer. A couple pair of dress shoes. I got a couple pair of Jesus sandals for the beach for walk around in the summertime. Got some shorts in there as well. That's it. Uh, ties. I have like 10 ties from back when I used to wear suits. That's it. My daughter was looking at it the other day. She's like, where, where is your stuff? And I laughed at her. I said, remember that <laughs> minimal, minimal, <laughs> minimalization phase <laughs> that I went through? Swedish death cleaning, when you go through everything and you look at it and you're like, I don't need any of this crap. And you get rid of it. And if, the, if you haven't used something in a year, you get rid of that too. I did it all. Even last week, I did more. I'm down to the nitty gritty. And it's awesome. It's so cool. I also have uh, in there an old, tool an, old, an old toolbox, an old craftsman toolbox. I mean, old, old. And I got the necessities in there that, you know, I could fix something around this house if I had to. The basics, right? That's where I've come in life. And then also, I prayed, continue to pray each and every day. Any spare time I have, I'm talking to God. Man, I hope. And here's, I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm saying. Each and every day to the man. I hope I'm where you want me to be. I hope I am doing what you want me to do. I pray that I'm doing what you want me to do. That's deep. 
What do you want me to do? I don't know. I mean, I prayed on this forever. And suddenly I have this inspiration to talk to you. And that's what I do. I wake up thinking about my conversation with you, wherever you are in this world, whoever you are. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you, you think, what you worship, how you live. We're human beings first and foremost, and that's the respect you're going to get from me. I respect you until there is no respect to be given. So, so I, that equates to I respect everyone and for their right to be them, be you, be who you are. And I'm going to talk about that and give you words of encouragement about that. That's what we're talking about right now. So on this day of accountability here, of being mindful, of setting goals for ourselves, I write things down. I have these books. I already explained those to you. And I write a lot of stuff down. If there's something bugging me, I write it down. In pencil, by the way. And I write these things down and I'll look at it. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And I'll come back to it. And who knows how many times I've already read this page that I wrote down all about theoretical probabilities and the chance and probability and calculating probability of a single random event and did the numbers and crunched the numbers and crunched the thoughts and came up with an idea that, hmm. Yeah, I, I see all that, but <laughs> I don't see how any of us can have control over that. But I do set the reminders as well. I write things into fruition. What about the podcast? What more can I do? I'll tell you nothing more frustrating than, you know, playing around with social media, which I'm going to be honest with you folks. It drives me bananas. I, I can't, I can't stand doing it. I mean, I like communicating with folks, but to try to come up with something, you know, funny every day. Come on, man. It's hard. But it's sometimes not hard for me to speak. That words sometimes just flow. And how I go about that is, uh, like today, there's no notes. I think sometimes if you speak from the heart and you're sincere about your words and what you're saying and your ambition and the motive, which is to inspire and help, how can you go wrong, right? And that's what I pray for every day. Because there's definitely somebody out there listening right now that's going through some seriously hard times. And I want you to know that you're not alone in that. And I also want you to know, regardless of your faith, whatever that might be, that's cool, and I'm fine with all that, but if you're looking for something different, ask the Christian God for some help. Try that. If you've already tried other religions and other faiths, try that. Ask God for help. I can only tell you what happened and what worked for me is when I was at the deepest, darkest, distraught time of my life, and my buddy said to me, listen, man, that's my buddy is Chico from the show. Bob, that's the guy. He says, Tone, your entire life I've known you. All you want to do is help others. All you do is pick up people and carry them on your shoulders. You're always there for everybody else. You need to have a little faith. You need to have a little courage. You need to dig deep in that fear of surrendering yourself and who you are. And asking for help. You need to surrender that to God. How vulnerable does that sound? Surrender? That's the last thing I'm going to do to anybody. I don't surrender in life. I win. That's what I do. If I want something, I take it. I go get it. I earn it. I win it. Apply that to anything in my life. And if it doesn't work out, then that was not meant to be. But it won't be for the lack of effort. And that is my mantra. That's how independent I was and am until you don't have a choice. Until that one day when you wake up and you realize control is an illusion that we are not really in control. That a lot of different things in our lives Affect the outcomes. Affect those theoretical probabilities. That hidden tell, that hidden something, something that affects the outcome. What is that? Life. And so, with that, I did indeed sincerely 
just didn't say the words, but I sincerely, with everything I am and who I was and who I am now, gave it up with all my heart. I surrender. I, I, I'm, I surrender. I don't, I don't know what to do. I need help. Please give me help. Complete surrender. And what happened was a miraculous mind, mindset change. Things started happening. Maybe it was a perspective that changed. I don't know. You could say all different types of things. But something did indeed change. A different understanding about my faith. A, a much deeper understanding. A much more personal relationship with God. And that was that. Surrender. Surrender. Surrender, Dorothy. <laughs> Surrender. It's a tough word, man. But when I did, my life had changed. And then suddenly I'm on this different journey, this different path. Things change. Nothing stays the same. Everything is in flux in life. It's just how it happens. And what do you do? You roll with it. What were my odds? What were my choices to do? You roll with it. You roll with life. Adapt and adjust and overcome. You adapt. You adjust. And you figure it out. You're still in the game. You're still in the game, but it's not the path that you might have chosen. For whatever reason, theoretical probability, chance, happenstance, circumstances, adversity, whatever it is, changed your life somehow. And now you're where you are. And what do you do? You continue to go forward. You adjust. Your behaviors, your lifestyle, your walk, your mindset, everything about you. Sometimes you have to adjust it. And, and maybe it's the best thing that can happen to you. And I'll tell you, without a doubt, this is the best thing that happened to me. Yes, I lost everything prior to who I was, the physicality, all of that. I had to learn something new. And what I had to learn wasn't something that you can see, feel, and touch, hold, own. It was this mindfulness. It was this other part of life, the things that you can't really see, feel, hear, and touch, the things that are there that you can only covet and love and appreciate. And then you realize what's the most valuable thing in your life. It's fascinating. The, the, the evolution that you can go through, how we talked about uh, when I was joking with Shane. Shane, what's the purpose of life? The, other, the last episode, and he says, to evolve. To experience different things. And how sad would it be that we never evolved and we still became and still are the people that we may have been when we were 15 or 20. But life happens to us, affects us in different ways. Adversity affects us in different ways. People affect us in different ways. And we evolve. And hopefully we become better each and every day. And that's one of my, my little sayings I say. Thank God for today. Another chance to do yesterday over and this time do it the right way. You learn from your mistakes and you keep on trying to get better and better. And that to me is what life's about. So what I, what I write into fruition, what I wish for and happy for, I'm happy for, is this. A continuation of this, to have the ability the love and the desire and the passion that I have right now to sit here and speak to you each and every day or how often I, I get the opportunity to do it. There's many times where I'm just not feeling right or whatever. You don't hear from me a bit. There's a reason. But uh, to sit here and talk to you. I talked about that before, you know, being in high school and I'm having a shortwave radio and just uh, this, this uh, teacher would talk to his father, wherever his father, I forget where his father was. Another country, I believe. I, I don't remember. Could have been the Midwest. I don't remember. But he would do it via shortwave radio. And I just thought to myself, thought to myself, how cool is that, man? 
via radio waves, this guy can talk to his dad. And I know you might be like, wow, big deal, dude. It's called like, you know, communication via electronics. It's fascinating to me. It's fascinating to me that I can talk to you. These words, these sound levels are going to go into a digital file. We're going to upload that digital file into a certain format. And that certain format is then going to get uploaded to Apple iTunes, which every other podcast format will pull from. And in that way, these episodes will will be available worldwide. And people from all over the place. In India, listening on Ghana. Uh, People listening on Spotify. People listening on Apple. iHeartRadio. Amazon. You name it. What a blessing. And then I think about the words that I just shared with you. My love for God. And my, my faith in God. And me asking you... If you're down in life, man, it's not working for you and you haven't tried God, try God. God will help you. Think of God like a, like tide. (laughs) Try new God (laughs) for H E washers. Try God. How about that? The Christian God. Ask for some help. Sincerely give it up. Sacrifice. Surrender your problems. And see if there's a change for you. It worked for me. And then there's the other side of it where I have friends like, dude, come on. You're talking about a worshiping a ghost that floated away off a cross, rose from the dead, and moved the rock. Listen, I know what I know, and I know what I feel. And there's something deeper within my heart that says it's real. And I will never trash you you or anyone else if you don't believe. But through it all, I know what makes me feel good. I know what works for me. And this is that. Theoretical probabilities. Oh, boy. Good stuff. So, with all that, I was thinking of a song. I'm going to read you some lyrics off a song. It's about peace of mind. That we live our lives, and I think that is one of the important objectives that I think we all have in our life. What is the purpose of everything we do? Everything. We want to live a good life. We want happiness, right? We want peace of mind. So I'm going to hit you with this one. Hit it. And this is a song called Peace of Mind by Boston. I'll read you the lyrics and we'll play the song. And folks, if you, uh, man, if you're not listening on Spotify, you're missing a good part of the show. And you might be saying, I'm not paying for Spotify. Don't have to pay. Go to Spotify.com. Open up a free account. I think you need to put your name and an email address. And find Finding Subjects Podcast on Spotify under podcast, follow us, and you're going to hear like an all, an, an additional half hour, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour's worth of, of songs, like talking the lyrics, you'll get like 30 seconds of the song, so at least this way you'll hear something. You might get a few commercials in there, but you're going to hear us talking about lyrics and breaking them down. That's a, There's a lot of passion there when we talk about that stuff. But anyway, I'm going to hit you with this one. Uh, it's just a great song. It's off the, uh, Boston's first album, and the song's called Peace of Mind. And it says, uh, now if you're feeling kind of low about the dues you've been paying, future's coming much too slow. And you want to run, but somehow you just keep on staying. And you can't decide on which way to go. And he says, uh, I understand about indecision, but I don't care if I get behind. People are living in competition. And all I want is to have my peace of mind. It's a deep song, but that's what this is about. Where's your peace of mind at? Where is your peace of mind going to be found? Are you going to continuously be in the rat race and not find balance? Because we can segue in another episode, we could talk all about balance and how important that is. Balance in everything. 
I'm going to read you the next paragraph, and that's it for this. Now you're climbing to the top of the company ladder. I hope it doesn't take too long. Can't you see? There'll come a day when it won't matter. I'll come a day when you'll be gone. It's interesting. Got to find peace of mind, folks. And you can. And maybe this helps you. What I'm talking about today is just writing things down. Um, just look at them, looking at them, come back and look at them again. Maybe write your goals into fruition, write them down and, and look at them, put them all over the, the your, your place where you go often, the bathroom, mirror, mirror, television, whatever, little sticky notes. And that's what you want to do. Maybe it's a simple thing is take a walk today. Find balance in, in that. Less beating yourself up in the mirror and being your friend. It could be the simplest task. But if you remind yourself of it and you work towards it, you can indeed achieve it. And I will add, why don't you try praying on it? I had this, uh, this fire built within me. I need to do more. I got to do more in life. I don't know what it is. What can I do? I'm limited. Who am I to, to want to do something bigger than me? What can I do? I, I don't have any training. What are my talents? We all have talents. All God-given talents. What are my talents? What am I good at? People talk to me. They come to me for their problems. And they seem happy when they leave. They feel as if I helped them in some way. People would like to laugh with me or at me. Maybe I'm good. Is there a talent somewhere in there? I'm extremely good at walking up to somebody completely unknown and having a conversation with them and then walking away and I just made another friend. What's my talent? Is there a talent in there? I'm thinking talent is singing, dancing, juggling, being an, you know, painting a picture. But how about a talent being communication skills? How about a talent that makes somebody able to bring other folks, uh, folks together and network that way and find a common bond and in that way create unity and make somebody feel better? Like, hey, man, all this crap that I'm experiencing in my life, I'm not alone. I'm not alone about this. Maybe I want to go seek, more, seek some help for this problem, go talk to somebody. I mean, this guy I'm listening to on this podcast, he gets it. That's because I'm, we're not alone. We all go through adversity. The difference between a lot of people and maybe yourself is some folks do something about it and some folks don't do something about it. So what if you're down in life like big time? What do you do? You do what I did. You pick up a phone. You make an appointment. You go speak to someone. And you trust them. And you pour your heart into it and you listen to what they have to say. And if for some reason that person doesn't work, you try somebody else. Until you get to somebody that you can get that they care about you, they understand where you're coming from. And then that way you try to, to fix yourself. And then you try to understand that, okay, what I'm experiencing is normal. And here's some tips and some hints of how to fix it better, how to deal with it better, how to adapt to it and overcome it. Or you may not overcome a life problem, but you may learn how to live with it. And in that way, you grow. Again, folks, in all of this, insert your individual problem. But I will tell you this, you're not alone. You're not that unique that you're the only one in the world with that specific problem. Unless you're Superman and you, you know, you're you uh, afraid of kryptonite. Other than that, we're all from here. <laughs> we all have the same uh chances, the theoretical probabilities of things happening to us, um, we gotta we gotta stick together. We gotta find that humanity within all of us. And we gotta work towards solutions. And in that way we make this world a better place. 
I pray to God that makes some sense to you. Because when I woke up this morning, this stuff is just flowing out of me, man. And I prayed on it all night, all night long. And I've been praying on it. Just help me help others. Help me make a difference, please. Help me see your purpose that you have for me in life because I don't know what it is. But I'll tell you what, God, I got this burning desire inside to talk to people. And on the flip side, I can be the goofiest, <laughs> average normal guy. That's, it. That's who I am. I was with my buddies not long ago last weekend. We went up to the uh, to Morgantown, Pennsylvania, to the classic auto mall. We had a great time hanging out, just being us. You try to be a better person every day, right? I'm, I'm talking to you. That uh, I'm far from holier than now is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm a normal, the, well, I'm a little bit above average. <laughs> I say that purposely because it's an inside joke between uh, four or five people. Like, I'm very above average. <laughs> but anything I say like that, trust me, it, it's just I'm being, uh, there's, I'm a very humble person. But that, that's, a, that's an inside joke, and I'll, someday I'll let you in on it. But, uh, you know, there's people that will say, you know, uh, oh, I'm just average. No, you're, Tony, you're way above average. It's an, it's an inside joke. So anyway, but I'm a humble person, man. I, I'm just a guy next door, right, with a dream. With a dream, and I'm living my dream. And what is my dream? I can wake up every day. My health is stable somewhat right now. I got a family I love. I have a home. I have heat. We have food. We have clothing. But most important out of all of that, I have mindfulness. And I have appreciation. And I have a deep burning love for all that I already have. And I have this unrelenting passion to speak to you and hope I can help you. And then people talk to me about the podcast. Ah, oh, dude, you making any money from that? You doing it? No. Why not? It's not my mission. My mission is to, is to talk to folks. Yeah, but you're doing it. No. If that comes someday, who knows? But that's not what I'm doing this for. I do this for me, for you. For this mission to be that little, little, maybe beacon of hope for some people. You can laugh at that. But I've been down. And I know what happened when I listened to the radio at night. And I heard Dr. Charles Stanley on 560 WFIL in Philadelphia saying these same type of words. And I listened to him and I'm like, maybe this is the answer. And he gave me hope. And that changed my life as well. And then I started talking to God and I started praying and I started getting in touch with my faith. Ironically, Dr. Charles Stanley, his church is called In Touch Ministries. And that indeed was another pivotal moment that changed my life. All right, that's all I got for today. I hope you got something uh, out of this. What is your journey for peace of mind? I hope you find it. And if you have not, don't ever give up looking. This is Tony. You've been listening to Finding Subjects. Uh, stick around. Come back. Follow us. Monday, Tuesday-ish is always hilarious with Bink and Chico and myself. Love hanging out with those guys, man. We have a, we have a blast. Honest to God, it's just a fun time. You pull up a chair, hang out with us. And just laugh, sing along with us, be goofy with us. That is a, an hour or two of madness that we just get together and laugh, man, because laughter is indeed the best medicine. If you know anybody that might like this show, here's the whole, here's the whole, I'll tell you a frustrating thing about doing a podcast. Who listens to you? It's all about organic growth for us. I was listening to a really big podcast the other night, and at the end, they must have thanked 30 people our executive producer, our main editor, our senior writer, our uh, this correspondent. I'm like, wow. And then I'm thinking uh, how much money goes behind that show. And then I'm listening to all the advertisements they got. And I'm like, wow, man. But that's how you, you know, that's how that, that's what we're going against. We're independents. So if you like this little independent podcast, please share it with your friends. Share it to 10 people and ask them to share it to 10 people and so on. And so on and so on. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. And uh, in that way, you'll help me 
maybe make a difference and we all do it together. That's it. Have a fantastic day. You have been listening to Finding Subjects Podcast. And how about a round of applause for you? Actually, uh, and another recording prior to this that I ended up deleted, I said, wouldn't you like to wake up in the morning and just hear this? <laughs> yay, Tony. Or yay, insert your own name. <laughs> Goofy things. Anyway, have a great day. Laugh, love the people that you're with, and uh, try to be a better person than you were yesterday. See you. Take care. Bye.